Welcome to the Hacking Music Podcast. Here you will learn the strategic frameworks, force multipliers, and micro habits that are essential for thriving in the new music marketplace. It will also help you to massively grow your artist career in new ways that support, strengthen, and sell your content. Here's your host, John Bashada. Now let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Hacking Music. Here we talk about the micro habits, the force multipliers, the strategic frameworks for the new music marketplace. And today I'm super excited to bring on a good friend of mine and a colleague. Uh, his name is Finbar O'Hanlon. Finbar is from Australia and you can see him here calling in early Australian time. Um, real quick, Finbar is an amazing musician, an inventor, a technologist, uh, he holds 13 patents. Uh, he's a film scorer. Um, he's worked with the Zappa estate. Uh, I first became aware of Finbar back pre-Spotify with the company Guevara, I think is the pronunciation, pronunciation of it, okay. um, which was kind of the leading streaming company before Pandora, before Spotify. Finbar was the CTO of Guevara. And uh, I'm excited. Finbar, thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks, John. Then great to meet the audience. Yeah, glad to, glad to have you. So before we kick off the conversation with Finbar about the murder hack, which is a really interesting concept that Finbar teaches and employs not only with other companies, but with himself, um, I thought it would be good to talk a little bit about the passing of a legend. And that is the amazing Edward Van Halen. Yeah. So uh, Finn, you wanna kind of talk a little bit about your time spent with Edward? And with Ed and Alex, yeah, well, so, um, boy, I was, obviously when I was a young kid, just probably like a lot of the audience here, uh, he inspired me, uh, you know, hearing that first Van Halen, Van Halen album and, or the, or, or it just it just it it wasn't groundbreaking it was transformational and it was like you know i can't remember how old i was it was probably like nine or ten and i just started learning the guitar and that was it i from there till i was 18 when i started becoming a clinician for jackson and mess boogie that whole period was eight years of studying wagging school doing nothing not even playing just practicing guitar mm -hmm. and you know uh it was amazing so all the all the stuff i've done in my life from instructional videos with george lynch to uh, to john sykes to all these guys at legends that i started working with um when i met um ed for the first time it was actually funny because when i met ed for the first time i went to his house um to the and to the back back of his house where the studio was I'd, I'd actually already got a platinum record for working with them through uh, Ron Poor and Andrea Gannis um, and Leo Cohen in in New York at Warner's. Um, and they called me in for some strategy, um, like some concepts around how do they, it was for the best of both worlds album, you know, how it was had to do something, something to do with the, you, the college market in the U S or something. There was a, it was something to do with how do they revitalize sales. Um, there was a, a tour coming up and blah, blah, blah. So, and I, to be honest, I thought I was just having a co convo with them and um, it wasn't a proper strategy session. It was just like, yeah, look, if you think like this and you do this and you put this here, maybe this might work. And then a couple of years later, I got a call, hey, come up to the office. And uh, anyway, so then I, um, I was in Hollywood and I had a business now, which I've floated on the stock exchange in Australia called Linus, which is a digital video technology, which without getting super technical, it allows video to be personalized for an individual in a second without any rendering. Right, right. But beside that, I'd actually worked on a music side of this. Um, and I'd actually built a pattern around a blockchain whereby the publishers of every single recording artist can be included in every play. So if, if a label did a deal with YouTube, the, it, it still wouldn't play on the recorded works if the publisher hadn't given a tick. So we went through this thing. So Ed and Alex got involved and- um, This is you know, the company Linus. Yeah, yeah, but we haven't, we didn't ever do anything with the music side of it. It was just, uh, we're still focusing on video at the moment. But anyway, I, I, so I, I got in contact with the guys and they're really interested. So I went up to the house and, 
you know, it was just amazing sitting in their presence and, um, and, you know, hearing them talk and, you know, Ed was unbelievable, but the one that really blew my mind was Alex. He was so awesome. (laughs) But yeah, look, it was just great. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting of credit. And the way I look at Van Halen, obviously Eddie and Alex, Eddie and Edward were out front being the pioneers, but Alex was kind of the behind the scenes operations, the Correct. decision yeah. maker guy. Is that, is yeah. that a fair summary? Of Very that? much so. He was really, I wouldn't say running the band, but he was really sort of, he was, you know, he was really, he was the wing that Edward would sit under, you know what I mean? And, um, um, and the brother, the brother connection obviously was just amazing, but, um, but, so, you know, it, Alex, uh, I don't know. I, it's very hard to explain because he's, I, I was, I was Ed, 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 and Ed is yeah. Ed. And so there's no taking away from him, but it was just like, imagine something going on top of that. Uh, I didn't expect. And so that's what Alex was. He was super friendly, super right. nice, um, organized meetings with me and um, his management company. And, you know, um, he was the one that organized my family and friends passes for the show, all of that sort of stuff. He was just an awesome guy. I a lot of respect for him as well as Ed, you know? Yeah. So what, what, um, what was your observation of Ed and Alex in the time you spent with them? I mean, obviously Eddie is an innovator, a legend and, changed musical history with Van Halen. But what what did you observe, maybe the non-obvious um, dynamics between the two? Uh, well, look, I can't say that I was, I don't want to make it sound like I'm, you know, was their best mates or anything. Like I'd only spend a bit of time with them. No. Um, but the to me, it was, uh, my, my impression was that uh, Alex was the big brother protector um, and sort of let Ed be the little kid, the, the child that would play around. Um, and um, in a way that that dynamic itself has its own sort of, sorts of things. But um, yeah, look, I, I don't want to, that's the best way I can explain it. There's obviously lots of stuff that in there, but look, nothing takes away from the greatness of, actually both of what they've achieved you know like I remember talking to Alex about his intro for hot for teacher and he quite humbly said yeah man I was trying to play this like five four thing and I couldn't get it right and actually it was a mash together of all this stuff that I'd done which was wrong um and then I had to try and learn it to play it live (laughs) because because my question with him because I'm a very much a I, I think visually I think pattern based and I was like Hey, Al, you know, when you played that intro for Hot For Teacher, I've always got a question I've never heard ever asked. I said, did you try and mimic the sound of, a, of Harley's idling? Mm. And he was like, what? And I go, well, you know, like I've got lots of bikes and, you know, when, when <laughs> say my soft tail's idling, it's got that real, <laughs> that cammy thing, but it's not actually in time. There's, it's not regimented. It's not like a rudiment. It's just, it's very floppy. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. That's because I was just stuffing up. And But, you know, it, 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 it was just, but yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I just found them to be really awesome dudes. Yeah, that's great. Well, let's um, let's talk about. You want to talk a little bit about uh, the Zappa project you guys um, had worked on? Yeah, so we've got a. Uh, both Ahmed and I have developed a technology called Resonics, and yeah. without getting into too much crazy yeah. math science, the core principle is. Um, the note frequency, some people might have heard about 528 hertz or, you know, um, 432 and all this sort of stuff and healing and energy and frequencies. And right. so, again, I, I won't go off track because I can get right into the mathy science of it. But now let's the core principle is, so high level is, what if every single note in a musical scale, which all has its own frequencies, the tuning, right. A, B, C, C, blah, blah, blah. If we took a mix of music sliced into 48 slices, which is 48 notes over four octaves, retuned every single note in a musical scale to where it's more in tune with the human physiology. So our baseline of a music song now is more resonant to a human. Right. Then we put all the traditional psychoacoustic um, cues to engage excitement, relaxation, uh, and, uh, all, all of the, these four different core criteria. And so we're using head-related transfer, HRTFs, um, uh, 
binaural beats, you know, all, all the usual suspects. Um, but we're doing it in ways where um, typical binaural beats, if, you, if the listeners aren't used to it, it's basically firing two frequencies that are different into each ear, um, say four hertz apart. The, the brain can't balance it, so it creates a phantom beat to actually try and balance it. But in the process of doing that, the stimulus used and required to do that beat overloads your brain, so it makes you not focus on anything else. So it's actually a way of overstimulating to create relaxation. So we're using some of these principles. Um, and so, yeah, we've got patents on that, and we're now in tests with different military, police, uh, mm. sports, lots of different people. Yeah. And so it's it's a different tuning, right? Instead of 440, it is. Well, but, well, you, people will talk about 432 or 440. That's one note. Right. So if you retune the the music to what that one note, then every other note in the musical scale is back out again with the human physiology. You've only tuned it to one note. Yeah. We're slicing it apart and retuning every single note in the scale, and then we're using a fast Fourier transform to make sure the phase doesn't get out when we push it back together. So it's, it's quite complicated. But. Interesting. That's great. And how long have you been working on that with, uh, um, about two years. Yeah. That's great. So you've got your hands in a lot of different pies. You're, you've got a guitar record coming out. You consult with boards and companies on, um, Thinking techniques. Well, and thinking. Yeah. 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 Good. So, so let's talk about this idea of a murder wall hack. Yeah. Um, break this down for like a 20 year old artist, uh, help them understand what you mean when you, when you talk about a murder wall and how that helps them think about the career building. Okay. So this is uh, very, very simply, yeah. Watch any detective show, watch uh, CSI Miami, one of those things, any real true crime show. Yeah. You'll often see a big giant board where the detectives are looking and in the center or there's a bunch of different suspects at the top mm -hmm. and there's bits of wool and there's all these different pieces of paper on the board and they're all showing a connection and, and it leads back to the evil genius or it's, um, you know, uh, it's, and so, in, in a murder, that's called a murder wall. And it's where you stick all the pieces of evidence and where you join the dots with pieces of wall. And you might see little bobby pins and then a little bit of wall that goes between it. Yeah, yeah. And so the murder wall hack is, is about starting to think about all the different artifacts um, that actually are help you going to solve your riddle of becoming where you want to go, right? Um, so it's using the methodologies that detectives use to go and solve a crime, gotcha. but trying to solve the, 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 all this different conundrum of I'm trying to go there, but I've got all this stuff in my periphery. Yeah. And how do I organize it? Yeah. How do I actually find something new when everyone says, release your record and put it on Spotify? Yeah. Oh, so, is that. So you're, you're, you're not assuming, you know, the answer you're looking at this as a problem solving problem solution. So that is an unbelievably amazing question, right? And I'll tell you why most people go, this is what I'm going to do. And they go on Google and they go and find out stuff and they go, that's what I'm going to do. And then they go and ask someone, is that what I should do? Right. And then the other person goes, Oh no, you should do this. And then they go, oh, okay, cool. And then they go to the other mate, should I, what should I do? And they go, oh, you should do this. Don't listen to that. And what you end up doing is being so confused yep. by so much stuff. And all you've got is you, everyone's opinion, including your own. And that is akin to a murder, someone being murdered on the floor. And you're going, based on my 20 years experience, I know it was John John's down the road. And then you, and you go to your, other, your friend and your friend goes, oh, no, no, no. I reckon it's that ice guy up the road. Right. And you ask, your other, and, you, and, and you go on and you just get confused. Yeah. And so what happens is when you actually learn the murder wall hack, you start to go through a process whereby the evidence will start to come together. And just like a jigsaw puzzle, you're finding pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. And once you start putting together, the picture appears gotcha. it reveals itself rather than you going oh i'm going to try and listen to 15 people i'll follow one then oh it didn't work and it's all because of you and yeah this and is a smarter way it's the blind leading the naked everybody has an opinion and everybody's wrong for the most part yeah 
yeah, this is, it's, it's very hard. It's a way to also validate, validate ideas if you're coming up with ideas for innovation. If you don't run through a process, yeah. this is a process whereby it will reveal to you what's working and what's not, or what you think, what's right. And here's the thing. It might just validate what you think in the first place, yeah. but it might not. But at least by going through it, it's a hardening process. It's a process of validation that, and it might uncover things. Like you go watching a detective show and you're going, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, remember, it's definitely that guy. He's got the D, he's got the fingerprints on the glove, blah, blah, blah. Then through the TV show, you realize it wasn't that guy. It was this guy. Yeah. That's like the paths of your music career, right? right? Yeah. If you're not collecting the evidence, if you don't know where to look, Mm -hmm. you don't know how to assemble it, then you're going to have all these different processes and tools and information and channels. And you're really just like the salmon swimming up the stream. You're not applying smart intelligence to it. And having a murder wall is something you can look at it instantly in the middle of the night and go, actually, and it invokes the thought process because you're seeing patterns in the actual evidence. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. So this, this is a tool you use to avoid the noise of the music marketplace. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's a way to validate. Validate, okay. Because gotcha. if you don't validate, you've just got bits of stuff. It's like, it's like, um, it's like dust. Yeah. Information's like dust. And right. you can go and grab a whole heap of it and go, I'll push it that way. It might, it look and it might work, but why not have every ounce of dust aligned with your direction that you know is 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 hardened or rooted in evidence yeah that's great so so how does this work you talk about an internal murder wall and an external Can yeah so walk us through how, how how you handle this okay so let's get the concept we got a big board it's a big whiteboard maybe get two whiteboards or get one whiteboard and put a line up the middle of it okay now at the center of that whiteboard on on one section you want to call it the internal murder wall. And you want that to be about you, the musician, the artist. So you go in the center. And on the second part of the board or the second section of the board is the external. And that is the fan. Yeah. That is the person who's going to buy your content, not yeah. just stream it, buy it. Right? Okay. Someone who's going to exchange, give you value in value exchange. So one side is the artist, you. One and side is you. Side is the fan or the audience. The fan, right. So let's go to you. Okay. okay. In you, what you then do is you get a bunch of sticky notes. You can have different colors if you want. So you might have band members in yellow and you'll write down. Yeah, so <laughs> your sticky note. So you might have one color, which is your band members, right? Or, or it could be um, your manager and your label and your publisher. Okay. But then around that, it's the... Uh, um, get, might get a different color or might get the same color. Then you want to you want to collect as many people as you know in sticky notes. Mm -hmm. uh, John from catering, who 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 when I'm the guy who runs the rehearsal room, um, blah 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 blah. And you want to get all these things on notes. Then you want it once you've got these notes, you want to start organizing them. So record label, John, Steve, Mark, Perry. Stephanie, blah, blah, blah. Put them, stick them all onto, in, into one bunch. Um, the catering, oh, there's John and Mark, um, the, blah, blah, blah. And then what you do is you start to build a map of people in your direct influence line that are part of your story. Yeah. Like people that can talk about your vision, can talk about, these are people that you start to build an ecosystem like a universe of people around you. Right. And these are like the different pieces of evidence. Relationships, people you work with, your allies. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so then all of that on the murder wall goes into a quadrant called people. Okay. These are people. Right. Then on the another quadrant of the murder wall, it's the what you've got to do is you've got to. This is really, really this is the hardest one of all to do in any sense. You've got to talk about value. What's the value you create? Not how many songs you've got. And this is hard because a lot of musicians I've worked with are all about, well, this is just my stuff, man. And people will like it or they won't like it. And I don't care because this is my vibe. Great. That's fantastic. I love that. 
But if you're trying to amplify and try to get people to find you, what's the value you create, yeah. right? And so it's the, oh, shit, I don't know that. And it's about working through it. So, and it doesn't have to be right. It's the, the value I create is I, I trigger emotion. I support our vets. I, I, um, I am, I, I, I'm really inspiring to a lot of guitarists. Um, our band is very mathematical, so we have a certain niche. And you start to think about these value propositions. Now, this is always the hardest because as musicians, we often think about how cool our band sounds or how tricky my playing is or what I can do. But it's yeah. about me, 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 me. And this is what that word of war is about. So anything you think is valuable, I can shred 400 beats a minute. Great. Put it on the value. What you're looking for is as many different sticky notes as you think is valuable, you know, um, and you put that into a, a quadrant on the on the murder wall. The, the value, so what you try the value you create as an artist through your music, as an artist, your show, your music, merchandise, you as a person, you as a brand, blah 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 blah. blah. So it's it's just, and this is why this is hard. It, it's not that why it's hard. It's a really great process because it's taking you rather than thinking about, oh, I'm just going to ask John now, or I'm going to ask Steve. This is forces you into a habit of finding the artifacts. This is as a detective. You might not know this at the beginning, but by the process of searching it out, um, you might start to find, find things, right? Mm -hmm. um, then what you want to do is you on another quadrant, you want to put the other bands that you love or the other music artists that you love. Now, what you're looking for here is that this actually helps you find value because you're now, if you can't find value, you're looking at other people that you're a fan of. And then you, we can extract that. And then you go, then often I would say, well, why are you, when I go through a, a deep dive with them on the murder wall, I say, why are you a fan of um, Periphery? And they go, oh man, those riffs are so great. And I go, so uh, does that, are those riffs in your, yeah. Okay, let me check that you've got that on value. Oh, I don't have it. We'll put it down. It's a way to help uncover and unpack by looking at other things that you like. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then it's the, the, the last part is the, the channels is the last quadrant, the channels that you think you can use um, to get your career amplified. It might be Spotify or streaming services, um, magazine, whatever you start to put it down and it'll, it's hard. Like you watch a detective show, watch the first 48. Sure. They don't have a word of all filled out right at the beginning. They start. They might have four things. And yeah. as they start thinking, more come up. So it's yeah. not about having it together. So the, the important... Let me, let me just repeat those four back to you. You said quadrant one was relationships, people, yeah. right? Yeah. Quadrant two was the value you create as an artist. Yeah. Quadrant three is kind of comparable artists, um, complementary artists right? Artists that you're a fan of, yeah. Okay, fan of comps. And then the fourth quadrant is channels for connecting to an audience. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, this is where this, this is where the synthesis comes together. This is where it's freaking cool. And what you do is you go, next exercise, you take you, put you on a sticky note, pull a sticky note out of each quadrant, right? Put it together, and write a story. Okay. okay, so John, who makes my sandwiches, um, periphery, um, um, great hook lines as the value. And um, so the periphery is the band, uh, the relationships is John at the fish and chip shop. Um, um, uh, I, I've sort of lost my train of thought, but anyway, but so what you do is that you start to, sorry? And, and then uh, uh, through Spotify. Okay. So then, then what you, you do is you st you've got to start writing these stories and you insert the artifacts in the story and it teaches you. So first off, then you might go, as an artist, if you like periphery, there's your first sticky note. If you like periphery, right? As an artist, right? And you're on Spotify and you're looking for something that looks, that sounds like periphery. We are the next evolution, right? We can resonate from, from the highest hardcore um, tech metal guitarist to John in the fish and chip shop. There's your story of John in the fish and chip shop, right? And so you start writing these little stories and what happens 
is you start to thread evidence into your narrative. Okay. You take them off and you put them in a different order or you grab four different things. And by doing this, you're creating what's called user stories. Mm -hmm. And by doing it, you think about yourself so much differently than what you did before. Gotcha. So does that make sense? It does. Let me let me ask about story. When you say you you write a story, you you pull you pull one sticky note off each quadrant. Yeah. Um, walk walk me through that. How what what is that what does that look like when when you're writing a story? Is that a uh, so it's it's a, it's a very short little story. This is a test. It's not the final answer. This is a process. Okay. It's a process of using evidence to come up with a with a theory. Okay. And. You, these stories aren't anything you would ever use. It's a process of looking at evidence on a wall and seeing the connections. Okay. So what you're trying to do now is you're trying to, when you look at first 48 and you see a little bits of wall between the evidence, you're doing that in your mind. Mm -hmm. And right. why is this important? Because right now I can have a, a company who's a law firm trying to move into some sort of different uh, segment. I can on the fly ask a couple of questions and thread together a pretty much a validated, constructed, innovative idea for them, which I can prove by evidence without going through a long process. And you become very quick. Be, you become like a gymnast at seeing evidence right. and threading it together. Now, right. the difference between you having an opinion, oh, I should go on Spotify and launch my album versus an opinion which has got evidence threads in it, mm -hmm. the chance of success is way, way greater. Right, right. Gotcha. Does it, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's sort of hard, might be hard to explain on this simple thing, but it's, it's just a matter of having trust and people always want the answer. Oh, I just want the answer now. Oh, this is going to tell me the answer. No, what it does is it teaches you to look for evidence mm -hmm. and it teaches you ways to put it together. Like a jigsaw, you're putting the pieces together, swap it around. Mm -hmm. Now the next murder wall, this is the one you practice on, which is you. The next one is really important. This is the fan. And this is really hard because you're not going to know these quadrants. You don't know who they, the people they know. And so it's different sort of quadrants for the fan. You've got to know um, what are the different uh, segments. So as a fan, what demographic am I talking to? Who, am I talking to everyone? Does he, if your music suits everyone, that's great, but it makes it infinitely more complex. But if you just said, for example, we like metal fans, uh, metal as a, as, a, as a category. So you go, let's call it a, a metal fan in the center. Okay, so it's got to describe, you got to, it's, it's called an empathy map, but without getting technical, you got to put yourself in the listener because if you're, if you're playing metal and you know you're targeting metal people, you're also a metal fan, like it or not. So you got to go back to when you were just listening to metal records and you got to go, right, as a metal fan today, um, what are the what are the what are the value propositions that I want? So, um, as a buyer, do I customer. as the customer, Fan. right? What is value? Value is less time, greater experience. So, if you said, uh, so let's say that I don't want to. And now, I'm not saying I'm going to try. And make, I'm trying to make this as simple as I can on a video podcast without a, yeah. a whiteboard. But if you're a fan, think of it as you. What are the things, the top line things that you want in your life? You want less time doing things. You want to you be more optimized. So, you know, an iPhone does 10,000 things in your pocket. So you don't have to carry 10,000 things, all right? Less, more optimized time. Uh, a better experience, for example. So you put down a better experience and that's very high level at the moment. Um, you want uh, greater relationships. You want to be inspired. And you put these words down, inspired, greater experience. And what ends up happening is you start to think through the lens of a fan. Now, when someone says to me, oh, uh, as a fan, I want a better experience. I go, great. Let's stop on the word experience. Awesome. How do you connect the dots as a musician to providing an experience to a fan, an experience that the fan thinks is an experience, not you as a musician thinks is an experience, which is unique, different, or greater than uh, something else. Now, it's and it takes work. I'll give you an example of what I'm doing in my new album. My new album's called The Code. 
it's got all these hidden codes in life. So I've taken color sequences of camouflage. I've transformed them to hex values. Which sounds fantastic, by the way. The bit yeah, up. thanks, man. Yeah, so I've got all these hidden codes. It's like a Da Vinci code. Yeah. And I'm not going to reveal all the codes. I'm going to reveal some of them because I want people to become active listeners, not just listeners to the music. I want them to search out inside it and try and figure out what I'm doing. It's an Easter but the way I'm... It's like Easter eggs. But what I'm doing is I'm launching my album as a short film without any words in it. So my, because I know short films are working, okay, on the market, I, I know that they're exploding. Music albums aren't an experience anymore. Was, okay. So for me, but rather than doing a film clip and then releasing another film clip, my whole album is about the code. So I'm releasing a, a, a film that actually doesn't have any story in the film. Mm -hmm. it's a it's it's a thread of narratives with abstract images so it's like one long film clip that's an album like the old war of the worlds or whatever right. and so i've been thinking about from a how do i mash together different concepts that are successful in the market to come up with something that i can actually go out to press and say here's a new way to engage mm -hmm. um, my launch in australia i'm going to have in different listening rooms in an old broken down warehouse with a beautiful lounge with sound plates doing cymatics on on out of sand on a floor in one room in another room i'm going to do projection mapping and so regardless it's the same track but yeah. i'm using different elements to create excitement or engagement it's and so on so that second murder wall it's about you putting yourself through the lens of someone else and trying to work out what they think is valuable in their life right once you've got those sticky notes then you've got to pull them off and mix them with the two murder walls and create the story. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets really confusing because you go, okay, I've got um, my Spotify as my channel. I've got my, um, you know, my cool riffs as my, as a value proposition that I think I've got John at the fish and chip shop and I've got blah. And then on this side, I've got to create a new way of engagement is something one of the cards there and i you pull these things off and you stick it down and you go and then you go shit how do i create a new way of engagement and that's where the lateral thinking comes in it's that it's a process of going right if i am uh, an artist that's creating music for a, a person that's creating value what happens if i call myself a filmmaker not a musician right people go well, why would you do that and they go, because I'm looking through the lens of someone who creates value for someone else, not someone who does it music. Right. Or I am looking for someone who makes a cake, a cake maker. So let's look at the process of making a cake. Making a cake, you have a bunch of ingredients. Certain comes together in certain forms. You cook it at the right temperature. It comes out. Think of that as a song. Your song has different ingredients. Mm -hmm. The different mixtures of it come up with a different product. You bake it together in a recording. Now you've got a cake, but a cake maker still has to sell the cake. Right. So go and look at a cake shop. What do they do? They've got good signage. They've got different marketing. What are they doing? How does that relate to your music? That bit, because people are make, so busy making the cake, but not thinking about how do I, how do I work with Jetpack? What, what, what cool ideas? How do I work with them rather than going, here's my stuff, go and do it. What, what is that mechanism look like <clears throat> in terms of, um, getting your music to realize value because there's so much noise out there with everyone doing the same thing. By you doing something slightly different might just give you that competitive edge. Yeah. Plus it's a, it's an interesting story. That's like, you know, I may not even be a guitar fan, but that's really interesting. So Finbar's created this recording and now he's messaging it and packaging it, not as a silver disc, not as a stream, not as a download, you're packaging it as a 30 minute film correct with your music as call it the soundtrack yeah. um, with no story in the film right. no actors that's interesting and so people are like so what's that and i go it is a process to learn how to active listen then i've got so what i've now got is i've got people who like visuals i've got people who like Da Vinci code and 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 trying to figure out puzzles right, right. i've got music fans I've got, um, I've got a beautiful narrative I can go to press and media about that's sure. completely unique. Right. right, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, and this is what I'm talking about. And so when I'll, I, 
you say to an artist, think of yourself as making a cake and, and the whole process of someone eating that cake. Mm -hmm. It's hard for them to do that until right. you could just start to talk about what I've talked about. Mm -hmm. And it, it's fascinating. What happens is your mind goes into these lateral things and you start thinking about, hang on, that WH Mason truck in New York that's got all the small cold cuts in it is actually a moving billboard. Um, you know, and you start to think about these just different concepts. But it really, it's, artists spend so much time on their music yeah. and the music is a part of the cake. Correct, yeah. Like the murder wall helps you put it up. It's the and helps box. you. It's so cool. It's yeah. so freaking cool. It's, it's actually... I know people are going, oh man, that's all crazy business stuff. I don't want to know about business stuff. And you go, no, man, this is patterns. It's like, you know, if I, if I do a piece, if I do camouflage in hex and I've got three, four, seven, that becomes my time signature that, that people go, oh yeah, that, but that's not a time signature. I go, no, it's just a pattern of three, a pattern of four, four a pattern of seven over a pattern of, you know, it's, it gets exciting once you start unpacking. Yeah. It sounds to me, Finn, like in, in hacking music, we have a, chapter on the experience economy. Yep. Um, talk a lot about Cirque du Soleil, um, about how an, how a fan steps into your universe. Yeah. It's a film where uh, yep. uh, great filmmakers don't just have a didactic one directional film. They create yep. a story that the audience, the fan can step into and yes. see themselves in. That's kind of, yeah. to me, it sounds like that's what you're doing. You're it, it is very much kind of that, except, experience except is not just a stream or a silver disc. I mean, it's, it's a different yeah. way of experiencing. The music may stay yeah. the same. But that, it's, it's exactly, something. you're exactly right, John. It's just that this process puts actual architecture to that, yeah. rather than just hoping that they will step in. Yep. It's actually by design. Sure, sure, sure you've actually approached it by thinking about it. And, you know, like if an artist is a metal artist or a jazz artist or a funk artist, what's wrong with going, I'm a funk artist without sacrificing my music, I'm going to bring in the gospel audience by just doing one thing that doesn't change my music by how I message it. Right. Right. Why not double your audience? Sure. You know, I, I, well, how would I do that? Oh, well, if, if, you know, what you're doing is you're talking about eight hertz being the psych, the earth resonant frequency, and what you've got is all your grooves are divisible by eight. You now have a narrative that might touch spiritual people. You know, you can actually start to think you might not even change your music at all. Right, it's right. the packaging. Yeah. It's the marketing around what's the story. Why would people want to come and listen rather than here's my track. Hopefully you'll listen. Yeah, that's great, fam. I love it, man. So you're, you are one of the rare guys and we've known each other for about five years and we've worked on some stuff together. You're, you're what I call like a polymath. Like you, you're an octopus, right? You understand music, you understand technology, you understand strategy, execution, collaboration. Very few people are octopuses like that. They're usually just like, okay, I'm a music guy out here. Check me out. Um, so you approach things in, in a very musical way, but a very smart way that um, I think people can learn a lot from kind of how you approach it. You know, you're not living well, in the world of 1982, you know, trying to be nostalgic and, and wish that the world was 1982. Yeah. You're in 2020. You're doing great in 2020. It's a pandemic. It's a weird time for everybody. Yeah. But you're staying on offense, which I think is a very important attribute to any artist entrepreneur, is the ability to wade through the noise, shut things out, and still keep shipping. Staying on offense, um, creating stuff that is remarkable and compelling. Um, I, I, look, I, I just say to, to all the fans out, all the fans of this show, is if you've seen an 8-bit spectrum analyzer with the little dots that go up and down, where the volume goes up and down. Yeah, sure. Think of each little block in that diagram as building blocks like Lego in your life. Yeah, yeah. And when you can reorganize the structure of that, it becomes fun. So for me, it's about patterns and it's about assembly and 
But to do that, you've got to have the evidence. You've got to build the Lego blocks in the first place. And when you can, just like cutting up the verse and the chorus and you mix them around in a song structure, when you're doing that with looking at it from your career, it becomes so, so flexible and becomes so much fun. That's awesome. That's great, man. What else? What else are you involved in? I know, I know you've got a handful of things going on. Can you share? Yeah, sure. Your- well, it's funny we talk about Lego because um, I've just worked on building the world's first AI machine learning interface for kids for Lego. So it basically allows kids to draw a picture of something like a rocket or a castle or to take a photo of someone. Mm-hmm. And it turns that it knows what pieces you have in your Lego sets, your Lego blocks. And then it builds a Lego model in front of their face on the, on the app. And then you press a button and it prints out the instructions of how to build it. So what we're using is we're trying to revalue all the kids Lego that's sitting on the floor mm. and allowing them to use their creativity and imagination in ways that they don't know how to build this stuff. So what happens if I built a, a unicorn with bat wings or what happens if I had a castle that had, you know, a rocket ship crashed in the middle of it? How do I build that? Yeah. So we know what pieces the kids got. We take, we scan their drawing. We, we imagine it, we build a VR model. So yeah, so that's, that's a new journey. I'm, nice. I'm, I, I'm working on, and I'm also working on being the, the face of a new um, software platform. That is uh, it's about work anywhere from a Ferris wheel to a home to uh, and it's all, it's a, it's a credit system. It's really, really cool. It, um, it's, it's like a, it's a brand new platform for working wherever you want and allowing organizations to cover oh and and governance and blah, blah, blah. Nice. nice. I love it, man. Fun stuff. Well, listen, man, it's always great to talk to you. I'm always inspired. You too, I learn a lot from you every time we talk, uh, which we need to do more of. Um, yeah, sure. How can um, people find you online? Can you share... Look, I've got my Finbar at finbarohanlon.com, which is sort of my music site. I, like I haven't updated for many years because I'm sort of just been working on business, but um, you can see me on LinkedIn, a lot of my projects with Ahmed Zappa, um, my, my Lego stuff, it's all up there. I've also got some music stuff and some playing stuff. I'm playing a war guitar now, which um, right. I'm pretty much, pretty much really starting to get on top of. Um, it's like a guitar and a bass in, in one neck like right. a Chapman stick, but, but again, a bit different. So I've, I've spent this whole pandemic, as I knew we're going into pandemic, I went, right, I'm going to learn this brand new instrument. There's only 20 or 30 or so made in the world. So I thought, why not take that challenge on? And um, so now I'm, so yeah, I've got little clips of that on, on YouTube. There's all stuff, all it's scattered all over the place. Right, right. Well, man, thanks again for carving out some time to talk about thanks, murder wall hack. Um, again, thank you so much. Been my pleasure all right bud enjoy guys have fun any comments hit me up and uh, i'm glad to try and respond wherever i can thanks so much finn see you soon thanks buddy the hacking music podcast is brought to you by jetpack artist ventures create what's next <laughs>